This video analyzes some of the number representation systems we've been discussing in more detail. The signed magnitude column is already filled out because we've already been discussing it for a while. We use 8 bits as usual and that means that we can use 7 bits for the magnitude portion of the number which in turn means that the highest number we can represent is 127. That number is represented with a zero, meaning that it's a positive number, and then seven ones. And negative 127 is represented with eight ones, because the first bit represents a minus sign, and the remaining bits are the magnitude. Now, the problem of having two zeros in signed magnitude representation has already been mentioned. One zero representation consists of eight zeros, and the negative zero consists of a one followed by seven zeros. You can see how these two numbers are the same except for the first bit. Likewise, these two numbers are the same except for their first bit. And this pattern continues for all numbers in signed magnitude representation. To human eyes, it is very easy to interpret a number. You see the first bit and you know the sign, and then you process the remaining bits as usual to find out the magnitude. However, this format is not easier for computers to deal with, which is why two's complement exists. However, we need to do some work to write out the negative number representations for both one's complement and then two's complement. The positive numbers are already here because they are the same in all three systems. Before we can do any of the two's complement numbers, we need to know the one's complement representations. So let's fill this column out first. If we take zero, and replace each zero with a one, we get a sequence of eight ones. This shows that in one's complement representation, we still have two different representations for zero. So these two numbers are opposites. If I take the representation for 1 and flip all of these bits, I get the sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Now in 1's complement, the first bit is still a sign bit, and the remaining bits are the opposite of their positive counterpart. So I will quickly fill out this column, but hopefully you know what I'll be doing, and you can test yourself by pausing and trying to fill it out before watching me do it. So negative 2, look like this, it corresponds to that over there, and negative 3, several ones and then two zeros. And then if we skip ahead, we have negative 126. Well, we can look at positive 126 and complement this number. So we start off with a one for the sign, and then each of these ones becomes a zero. then the final zero becomes a one. So these numbers are complements of each other. And then finally we have negative 127, which is the complement of positive 127, simply a one followed by seven zeros. Seven. 
So this number and that number are complements. So what's interesting about one's complement is that ignoring the sign bit, the lowest possible number is all zeros. So negative 127 is all zeros. Now if I use standard binary arithmetic and add 1 to this number, I will move up in the 1's complement representation to negative 126. Well that makes complete sense and is actually a useful uh, aspect of this representation. But the problem with 1's complement is that we still have two zeros. That problem is fixed in 2's complement. Now recall that 2's complement does not have two zeros. There is no negative zero. In fact, even if we tried to make a negative zero, we would fail. Recall that to get the 2's complement rep representation of a number, you take its 1's complement representation and add 1 to it. If we took negative 0 in 1's complement and added 1, it would cause a sequence of carries until a final carry. So the result would be 1 followed by 8 zeros. However, with only 8 bits to represent a number, we can't hold 9 bits. So trying to convert negative 0 into 2's complement representation actually turns the number into the regular 0. So that's why not only do we not have two forms of 0 in this representation, we cannot have two forms of 0 because of the limited size of the memory. However, we can add 1 to all of the other negative numbers. If we look at negative 1 in 1's complement, which is a sequence of 1's and then a single 0, and add 1 to it, well, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Eight ones. In other words, this sequence of eight ones, which represents negative one and two's complement, is the same as this sequence of eight ones, which represents negative zero in one's complement. The values are shifted down by one. And we can confirm that by doing more calculations. If I take negative 2 in 2's complement and add 1 to it, this 1 plus 1 will leave a 0 in the far right position. A 1 will carry over to where there is a 0 here, and all of the remaining 1's will also be in this result. And this number is the same is the binary number used to represent negative 1 in 1's complement. So we are shifted by 1 yet again. Let's go ahead and do one more. Negative 3 with 1 from 1's complement with 1 added to it gives us 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, which it's the same number used to represent negative 2 in 1's complement. Now this process continues. If I have negative 126 represented in 1's complement and I add 1 to it, I will get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And if I take negative 127 in one's complement and add 1 to it, I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. We can see that negative 127 in 2's complement is the same as negative 126 
in one's complement. Similarly, although it's not shown, this number in two's complement is the same as negative 125 in one's complement. Notice that I've left an extra row here with negative 128. That's because by not having two forms of zero in two's complement, we actually have room for an extra negative number, namely 1000000, zero, 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 which corresponds to negative 128. So that is another small benefit of two's complement number representation. So in summary, two's complement numbers that are positive are the same as one's complement and sine magnitude numbers. One's complement and two's complement numbers that are negative are similar but shifted off by one position. The reason for this shift is to prevent two's complement from having two different representations of zero. A benefit that both one's complement and two's complement have over sine magnitude is that if I do regular binary arithmetic on negative numbers, for example, adding one, I will go to the next number in that particular number system, even if I'm remaining with negative numbers. For example, adding one to negative 128 gives me negative 127. This also explains why integer overflow in a computer goes from the highest possible number to the lowest possible number. You look at this number here, which represents 127. If I were to add one to it, then a series of carries would result, leaving a one in this column and several zeros here. Well, that is the two's complement representation for negative 128. We'll explore more two's complement arithmetic in another module.